Okay. Okay. All right. Well, um, I think we're pretty much ready to start. Uh, Don Victor, if you could. I can. Oh, All right. Let me share my screen. All right, guys. And uh, this is only one piece, or? Uh, there's two in here. Okay. Okay. All right. Well. Okay, Mr. Bill, if you go, if you don't mind uh, taking us through your. Okay. So yeah. what, what this is about? I, I did a piece about a year ago, and it used to be on my uh, Facebook, uh, like my pers personal fic picture. And um, Victor thought it needed to be redone, so. This is how I started this, this piece. There are two pieces I'm working on. And um, this piece here, what, it, what it's evolving to is like a four and, four and three. Like we talked a while ago about rhythm and, and uh, like how it compared to music. Mm -hmm. But here, if you look at the, the uh, I guess it would be the verticals. Mm -hmm. And we make the diagonals, there are four. There are two bands of four within one, two, three spaces of like the oval so i'm looking at that like four and four and three and um that's just basically what it is with the the eyes the, the large eyes sort of like wings and um that's basically it for this one it's the other one's similar the other one is three and four hmm. so what made you create uh this particular piece well, I was trying to modify the, the piece that, that I had done before, but I realized that what I had done before really wasn't, you know, the composition was really, uh, I guess, to, re to redo it, it was really over my head in terms of being able to make something that was, um, it made sense to me. So I discovered that a piece like this makes more sense to me because it's simple. Yeah. You know? trimmed away a lot of stuff. Back at, when I did the other one, I thought that a lot of stuff meant that you were, that you were working well. And mm -hmm. I think that, that here, you know, I, I can, I'm showing for myself that you know, I don't need to work a lot of stuff, just, you know, work what you have. Use, use a little, few things and, 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 you know, work them well. Mm. Mm. Right. Mm. Well. I'll tell you from what I see right now, man, this this is a I love this piece. It's a very strong piece. Uh like you said, the rhythm is very, very strong. And it all it almost takes me into a meditative like trance like state, just with the you know, the the lines, you know what I'm saying? And it's like yeah, right, 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 right. It's, it's, man, I, I would buy this, man. That's that's how powerful it is. Um cool, man. Um Martin, what do you think about this piece, man? Let me hear your, your spiel. Spiel. And what we're learning as far as composition. Yeah, I like what you said, Bill, that the lines give it kind of like a, a sound to it, you know, your verticals and your support and your uh, diagonal. It's actually a very interesting piece. Like you said, uh, you know, breaking it down to simpler shapes just makes it a lot more powerful. It doesn't have to be you know, putting in all these extra lines and extra extra weight when you realize that you start peeling it back and just use simple shapes, it becomes very powerful. And I think that's kind of what I started realizing in my next project is like, I don't need all this extra stuff. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's just like it's give it's it's weighing it down. It's like and and then begins kind of, you know, miscommunicating what's going on. But I really like this piece. It's really cool. Especially seeing what you had first. And now you're coming back and redoing it. It's beautiful, man. I like it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Don Victor. Uh, Bill, I like that you're trying to figure out visual rhythm <clears throat> and that you're, um, I'm going to say this in a way, but don't take it too personally the way I'm going to say it. You're making an intelligent mess, right? You're, you're, you're figuring this thing out. 
and I think you're going to be one of the first people to figure it out. Um, I like that you have the three big spaces, and in each of the two spaces, you have four small spaces, right? So really, right. you have a two, three, four rhythm going on, which is kind of cool, with inside of a one circle, right, which is kind of nice. Um, uh, in terms of maybe if you're going to go back and retackle it, I would think a little different about the shape of the outside of the face. Mm -hmm. I'm not even sure you need it, to be quite honest. But, and then obviously, uh, I think the eyes don't fit the piece, but with just a little tweaking, you can, you know, rework those. So maybe incorporate a little bit more line inside the eyes. Um, uh, but you want to be careful that they don't look like bug glasses or, or you know, because it might, it might, um, you want to make sure that it feels like it's part of, of the design and not laid on top of it. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. I got it. Uh, I do like the circles of the eyes. And, and I'm thinking you might want to, folk, you know, even the outside of the shape of the face and the, and the outside of the eyes, focus more on straight line and then have those two piercing eyeballs as pure circles in a gamut of, like in a, in a, in a matrix of lines. I think that, that juxtaposition will become very, very powerful. What do you mean by a matrix of lines? I mean, verticals, horizontals, what do you mean by that? Line, boom, boom, like straight lines. So it might be diagonals and, and stuff, you know, so if you have the, uh, the, 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 the circumference of the face, rather than having it done in a curve or an oval, you know, break it down to lines, even with the eyes, break it down to lines, and then the pupil, the little circle on the inside, you keep those as pure circles. So they're really the only like true curve in in the piece, and it'll just be like a red on a on a blue. It'll be like a, a warm on a cool, black on a white. You know. So so it'd be these <clears throat> these type of lines here, right? Like that. Yeah, you would you would straighten those out. Well, yeah, right. But I mean, I'm, I mean, just there would be parallel uh, diagonals. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. You could do that, sure. And then, and then the face itself. So maybe like the top of the head would mimic that line. The bottom of the chin would mimic that line. Wait, I got you right. Yeah. But basically, when you look at it, you want to feel this this linear structure. And then all of a sudden, the sole of the eyes, you know, are like just these perfect circles that are just piercing back at you. So then it would be like this here, 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 and this. Take this out. We don't need that. Need just, what? Take what we, out? We don't need to have it extend past the head. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Right, the line. The line's just going to go to the edge of the face, the, the, the green line. Yeah. But, it, but it's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to mimic this line here. Here, here, here. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? I can't see, I can't what, see what, what you just what did. You just did. But it sounds but it right. Sounds right. The, the top of the head is here. Hold on. Hold on. So maybe you mimic. Like, is this what you're saying? Mimic this line here? No, no. The top of the head. The head is on an angle. Yeah. Right. Now the 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 diagonal line around the eye structure that would mimic the same angle. Like yeah. that. Right. Yep. And same would happen on the on the chin. So if you go here and put a, a, a diagonal there, you probably bring it in here, up through here. The chin, if you went through here, you just you already have it going through there. Maybe you have it the same as this, which you already have going here. Bring it up. You know, so you're basically starting to lin linearize. <laughs> oh, right, right. I know what you're saying, right. Everything. And then that becomes a beautiful contrast with these perfect circles. Mm. I would remove the circles out of the lips just because circles on lips make you think blisters, right? So I, I, would, I would remove those out so that 
um, it doesn't feel like you know he has uh, so, so, something on there unless there's a reason like a really important reason that you have him on there well in, in, in my, my concept of mass making I you know I, I don't see circles that are listed to make it, you know, list but here also what I what I was discovering in a way was that um, there's a difference between line and and curves and so I had a balance I thought between the, the curve and the balance I mean the, the line and the curve and um, it kept it from being like the original one was more curvy which was more feminine but this seems to be more balanced because of the line. Okay. All right. Oh, I'll move to the next one. Yeah, let's move to the next one. Okay, wow. Okay, Bill. So what were your well, this this is the I did this one first. This is like um, three over four, three lines, three three lines coming down, you know, um, over four spaces within four spaces. These guys are coming down like so, and uh, this was just a development from the original piece. Um, you know, trying to keep some of the on the original piece, I had a lot of little sections in it and sections had their own little world. So I tried to keep some of that, but I took most of it out, probably 90% out in this mm. right. So, right. So. Mm. 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 And, and when, I, when I was doing all this stuff, I, I hear Victor's his waist. But you have to make those straight. They're not parallel. They're not lining up with the grid. You got to line up with the grid. I know what you mean. I'm, 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 like, dang it, all that work I did, and it's like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think is the strongest, uh, strongest element about this piece? Great question. <laughs> who, who are you talking to? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I was talking to Bill, but... Um... Well, I guess I think I failed to do that, but I, I guess I, I would say the strongest <laughs> element would be, would be the left eye, because it would be like dominant contrast. But... Barring that, um, it would be the nose, the, the 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 nose area, eyes, nose, and mouth. That would be the strongest area. Okay. Okay. You want to just keep asking that question? And go around, Brian. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. I was. Um, you can go ahead, uh, Don, and we'll hit Martin. Yeah, I think the strongest area of it is the mouth chin area. I, I think the chin needs to be tweaked. The space looks just a fraction too large to make it fully pleasant. But um, but I do like how that curve comes in the bottom of the lip, and then you have that beautiful space in the uh, the chin area. So I like the, the top lip, bottom lip, um, chin. And um, maybe if – this is an interesting idea, Bill uh, – Maybe, you know how, like when you have a finger and you have your knuckle, your other knuckle in, in, into your hand, right? Like when you put the calibers, the distance from here to here to here to here is a, is a golden section, but also from here to here as well and from here to here, right? So it all breaks down into that ratio, that rhythm. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of curious if you were able to develop some type of ratio that from here, from that top lip to that bottom lip, and if you took this, what would that ratio be? Right. I got you. you know? 
And the way you would figure that out would be take a the rectangle, make the ratio that you want, and then figure out that diagonal and that diagonal. So, so then you would just right. extend those two diagonals to wherever you wanted it to be. So if you extend that diagonal, you just come up, oh, there it is. There it is, you know. <clears throat> nice. But then taking that ratio and going throughout your whole piece, so the distance between here and here would be that same ratio, you know, just trying to figure that out. That could be another fun, quote unquote, math, mathematical, you know, for experience. I was thinking, like, but in the distance between the nose and this space in here, that's not the same as, as these guys because because of the position, you know, you know what I mean? Like, I'd have to, I'd bring the, if following that formula, I'd have to bring the nose over here someplace. Sure. Hmm. Guess I could do that. Hmm. Sure. I was thinking though that, so what would happen would be that this area here, this, this, this is like a, a weight up this way, and over here there's nothing. So you just, it's sort of like balanced out like that. Hmm. Kind of adds like a yin yang type of thing almost. Yeah, you know, and the eye is gonna go to the right, but it goes. It wants to go to the left because there's nothing there. It wants to know what's over here as well. I like how uh, seemingly like the eyes, the angle of the eyes kind of meets the angle of the zigzag almost on the 90. Right. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> like right around in here. I can't, how can I, um, how can I draw on this thing again to annotate? Yeah. Go to annotate, go to options. Okay. Annotate the bottom one. Okay. I think I'm I think I have it. Then go to draw. Okay. Like uh this line. Ah, I messed up. <laughs> but like there and then um, you know, and it kinda, mm. it kinda makes those nineties. And I, I'm, the nose almost is on it, you know, but it's like I see that pattern kind of uh, going here, there, you know. Yep. And I remember the importance of 90s being, you know, bringing, making it stronger in a certain area. So. Right. It does create that energy. Yep. Yeah. You know, I just realized, Bill, um, a lot of what we're talking about, once you take this sketch and you uh, – lock it into a grid, a lot of what we're talking about, the grid's going to give you. It's going to give you those 90 degrees or those repeated angles. It's going to give you the ratios. It's going to give you all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. So, Martin, let's hear your uh, critique. Well, it's interesting because I'm looking at both these pieces. My head wants to keep leaning, like, to the Me left. Too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the biggest thing, like, I notice is, is, is the, like, that golden section. You know, you see when a big old curve, like the seashell. That's the first thing that reminded me of what I'm seeing this piece, is that I can see, like, the yin-yang going in here. And Victor just made, brought up a very good point. All these things here, once you lock that into the grid, still it's gonna it's gonna completely just change it. Yeah. But it to be, you know, nice. It's gonna like fit. So like you said, like Bill uh, what you were saying uh, earlier, Bill, you better get on those you better lock it in, better put it all oh, on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, I, I didn't lock it in. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it'd be good to see once you get it through the grid and see what difference, you know, it makes. And choose, I want to see which one you want to choose, too, which grid, you know. Mm -hmm. in, well, yeah. uh, I'll, work, I'll experiment with that. That's a good idea. In the spirit of Prince, 
You want to create a song for us? Lock it in, lock it in, <laughs> lock it in. <laughs> so, 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 like think Purple Rain, but like no. So 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 whenever whenever the uh, whenever the Don Victor, whenever the Don Victor tape comes on, the background song is Lock it in, lock it in. <laughs> That's what she said to lock it in, baby. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Lock it in, lock it down. That's Love awesome, it. man. Cool. Great job, Bill. Um, I'll, I'll, let me make one last comment about these. Um, I love beauty, okay? And so I have, like this curse of looking beautiful. No, I'm just joking. I love beauty, and so I always want to look for it and see it, right? And by beauty, I mean stereotypically cosmetic beauty. Like, you know, wow, that looks pleasing to my eye. Um, and I think when you're doing masks and distortions of faces, we always have to remember that the viewer is looking at it and how they're going to respond to it. And so I think, you know, we want to always be, be true to the work and also uh, sensitive to the viewer. Because if, the, if the, the face is distorted, which is fine, but if it's distorted in such a way, uh, like, like, like the, the head up here, right, it, it's a little long, right, this space in here is a little big, that starts to feel a little grotesque. Right, and it could just be like shaving off like uh, such a small little like fraction of, of space, and then all of a sudden it's, it's not grotesque, it's just different, it's neat, it's interesting. And um, there was a plastic surgeon who was really good, and, and, and he measured like all of these faces, right? And he said that if you, um, if you're composing a face. Uh, let me see here. And you're trying to get the distance of the nose to the, what's that thing, fulcrum or whatever? Not fulcrum, but a thing right above the nose here, right? He right. said that there's three measurements. There's like, I don't know, let's say two millimeters or whatever, right? But if it's like two and a half millimeters, it's like a little longer. And if it's under two millimeters, let's say one and a half millimeters, right? So there's only like a half a millimeter difference. Is, is is what makes it beautiful or ugly. And it's so strange how just one little smidgen of extra space can make it, you know, like, wow, that's, I, 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 I feel pleasure when I look at that versus, uh, you know, shun the children. So I'm just saying that as you go through these masks to be, conscious of that you know you don't want someone to look at it and be like uh and then not look at your work because it's just triggering and uh, a discomfort in them so it's just just something to be conscious of you don't have to make you know pr pretty people pictures um just being very conscious of the of the spaces with inside that human face I think the grid, I think, like you said, also, the grid solves it. Okay. Know, like, uh, uh, another quote comes in my mind. <laughs> the grid solves all things. You know? <laughs> <laughs> uh oh. We're going to become the, the cult of the grids. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great, Route 5. Bless us this. We're going to have Cinco de Route 5. Simple day root five. It's coming. The same with Mayo. I say no sati fatamos, but tres cuatro días ya. Yes. Cuatro días más. Yeah, cuatro. Cinco de ruto cinco. Whatever. We have to walk out and get some dose eggs, man. Right. Don Victor, man, we got. I got some more time, man. So we might as well carry um, it, over, man. All right, let's uh, go ahead and clear off those annotations. I'm gonna hit clear all. 
Uh, we'll get back to the, um, here. I know you got more time, Brian. <laughs> Uh, clear all. Uh, okay. Oh, I gotta shut that off. Okay. Now I think we're good. Okay. <laughs> Can you guys see the uh, oh, boy. Martin's work here? Yeah, that's nice. That was the one from last week, right? Yeah, that's the. Uh, no, that's. Two weeks uh, ago. Two weeks ago, yeah. Two weeks ago, okay. I know my butt. That's a two week ago butt. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Brian. Do, do what you right, do. Um, Martin, take it away, my friend. <laughs> All right. So my intent on this one was to totally just start. Um, actually, you know, kind of what happened during this week. I was uh, realizing, okay, what do I really want to do? Do I really want to do it in digital or do I want to do it in, in, in actual traditional? And I was checking out some YouTube videos and I'm like, man, you know, what's it going to be? And I realized that something that's very powerful here is that to do it in digital first, to map it out in digital is like really working for me. And then at the end, go ahead and do it in traditional where it still keeps that, it's still keeping it, you know, both worlds are kind of combining. They're not clashing with each other because there's a big argument whether digital either has value or not. I'm like, well, it does, but it's quicker. You know, there's one thing that digital has that traditional doesn't have, and that's alt control Z, you know, you can just quickly erase yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. So, the one thing I wanted to do this week was, go ahead and do uh, a pencil version traditional and do a digital version and it was cool just to just to try out both and see the difference you know when I'm doing the I mean I did this in maybe like 20 minutes just bringing it back in there you know tightening the lines and just getting that nice stroke of the, of the pencil and then when I was doing it in digital today, it took me about four hours, but it was nice and clean, but everything's nice and sharp. I mean, everything's like tight. I mean, it's really tight. Yep. So my intention was just, just to get a feel for both worlds and see, okay, what do I, what do I really want to do here? And ultimately what I'm going to do is do it in digital at first, maybe actually traditional sketching, go bring it into digital and then bring it back into traditional because it's just it's cleaner i i want that that kind of art deco but very simple shapes that are powerful in composition that's what i'm looking for and that's basically what i'm achieving there so mm -hmm. that's the goal yeah so can't can't you put isn't there some type of thing in uh illustrator that let you take a you know like a you can take your 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 vector, right? And you can sh put it into like a drawing thing. Can you do that? Yeah, you can take a regular sketch, and they have a. I think yeah, Illustrator does it. There's a. I think there's a website that does it. You just bring whatever picture, and then it just, bam, it just turns it into a vector. But what I like about it right now is that I'm, I'm I'm more focusing on just simple shapes. I don't need all the extra weight, like I was saying. Like it just not necessary to get what I'm trying to accomplish. You know, nope. so like yeah, because I, because you have the movement of those the, your, your your circles and all that stuff is so powerful. What else do you need? It, you know, it's beautiful about this piece. <clears throat> and then I'll tell you what's absolutely disgusting about this piece. <laughs> I know what it is. <laughs> what is it? The name. <laughs> Damn freaking right. <laughs> well, what the hell is that? Somebody walked by this beautiful, you know, landscape garden and, 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 and threw a, a soda can in it. Um, <laughs> I'm glad you know. Well, yeah, it, 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 it did jump out, Neutron. Uh, I know, that's why in the digital version, I didn't put it in there. <laughs> <laughs> you got so happy, man. You're like, oh, 
Now for the money shot. Oops. <laughs> Oh shit! <laughs> I tell you what, one of my you're like I missed. <laughs> <laughs> what were you gonna say, for, uh, Brian? I was gonna say what what stands out to me that that just I like looking at is uh like these lines here mm -hmm. here. <coughs> Some reason like that just catches my eye, and I like looking at her uh i guess i guess it kind of makes me look at her because there's a lot of uh arabesque going around and um but besides his legs it's like those are like uh i guess a concentrated angles together or diagonals together that, that makes me look at her but um mm -hmm. That's just my thoughts. Um, what I was going to say that I like about it, Martin, <clears throat> is we see that they're dancers and that she's and that he's kissing her, right? Mm -hmm. But because of the spinning arabesques, we recognize representationally what we're looking at. But strangely, we don't. Like for me, I don't feel like I'm looking at two people. I feel like I'm in the inside of some abstract moment. But because I have context through the representation, I feel like I'm in the midst of passion, not watching two people kiss each other on the dance floor. Like I feel like I'm I, I somehow been trans transported from seeing it to being in the middle of this heat. And I just and and that's part of that spinning arabesque. And now you're just trapped in the middle of this passionate design. And I think on that level, it is unfucking believable <laughs> so You're the baby that's being made, Tom Victor. What was that? So you're the baby that's being made. Absolutely. <laughs> and, and that area that you were pointing at, I was thinking the same thing with that back leg coming through. I mean, you feel almost like they become one, like they, like he's penetrated her. She's, received him like it is passion it's 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 fuck it's love it's everything and life is blooming out of this moment i mean i i think this is an incredible uh master work from storyline to final execution except for that freaking name <laughs> you know i put that there on purpose right <laughs> i bet you did you, I, I know you put it in there. You're like, oh, crap, that looks so shitty. But I got to keep it in there just to piss them off. I knew, yeah, I knew. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Hey, Bill. Yeah. Uh, yes. Oh. You got any comments? Yeah, it's, it's over. I mean, I love the piece. I'm just curious why the, the back, I'm having difficulty reconciling the position of the back foot of, of, the, of the male. Like I, how would how would the guy stand up like that? Hmm. Well, he this foot that's up front. That's your right forward, and then the one that's back is kind of. Oh, it's dragging. I, I see. Yeah, I yeah, it's dragging. Okay, I got it. Got it. Uh, yeah, I I have to uh, you know uh, go along with Victor said about all that spinning and stuff and being immersed in a, a whirlwind of energy that's, that goes beyond, you know, the sex and uh, the, the, the male, female, but it's a sexual thing based upon it. Very nicely done. Uh, just for the future, Martin, uh, and for all of us to pay attention to this, one of the reasons why the both bodies merge, okay, is because of a little technique called tangent. And you did this on purpose, but you probably did it accidentally at the same time. <laughs> um, and what, what happens is this. Uh, usually you don't want tangents unless you're intentional about it. So tangent, if I have a, a rectangle here, what I want to do is come like this. A tangent would be putting a rectangle here and then one here. Well, which one's in front? Which one's on the side? Which one's in the back? You can't tell. It, 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 it destroys the identity 
of the shape. So when you have this shoe coming down here, this shoe here becomes part of this leg. It becomes her foot. It becomes his leg, right? This, her dress becomes part of this leg, becomes his back. You see what I'm saying? Like, so like even this shape here is him. I mean, this is his part of his body, yet it's her body. And it's that intentional use of tangenting, tangenting, <laughs> that's making this tantric. No, uh, that's, that's basically causing them to lose their individuality and making them one. And uh, I, I just, it, it's done, uh, like I said, I know you did it intentionally by putting the lines there. I'm not sure you knew what that word was or, or that, that technology, but there, there is, uh, and I like how, you know, they, they become one and then out here they, they begin to separate again, right? Mm -hmm. So on the, on, the, on the outside here, they're separate and now they're starting to merge. And now it's like, well, whose arm, like the bottom of her arm is the top of his arm. Her back shoulder is the inside of his hand, you know? It's like, well, who is who? What is what? They're becoming one flesh, one spirit, you know? And yeah. uh, I just, I think it's, it's brilliant. Yeah. Except for this dream. Mm. Well, and that's what I was thinking when you were saying that. I was looking at the picture, I'm like, hmm, I wonder, you know, how I can play with the values, you know, from her dress to his coat. You know what I'm saying? It's I don't want that big, that much of a, a value change there. So well, maybe still, your, your challenge isn't value. Maybe it's temperature. Make yeah. her in a red dress, him in a blue blue jumper, but they actually have the same value. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Or. If it's, let's say they're both a three in that area, then maybe uh, he might be like a 2.75 and she might be a 3.25. So it's, it's not even a value shift, like a full number, but it's just a half a value difference. So there is a slight difference, okay. but, you know, because ultimately – you need something to create this line that's occurring. Mm -hmm. Another strategy for that would be he's a three, four, four, three, you know, or something like that. That's, that's what my thought ran through my head is almost like a gradient right there in that spot. Not so much, not, it doesn't need to, it doesn't need to be that powerful. Yep. Uh, separation because you know, like you said, that, that there's a joining together. So that was something that I was considering when I was putting it. Composing. Yeah, so you could do, let's say, a three, and when you're down here, maybe a three and a half, then a four back to a three or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe even a three and a half down here. So that way it's it's just a half a jump, jump, just a, a slight, slight change. Mm. Mm. And then when you're out here, where the feet are, where the head are, well, then you have a very clear distinction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When these thighs pop out, those are her thighs, you know? Yeah. <coughs> nice. Okay. Very good. All right. So this one, man, it was cool. I, I, I really like the changes that we talked about last week. Just giving her more, bringing that space between them, going ahead and adding in his big old butt. <laughs> and then doing, uh, separating the, the different, the top from the bottom and the middle. Um, I, you, know, it, you made a good point, too. Victor point out that the faces should have the same vertical lines and so I'm like man what, what can I add there to give it that face or give it that attention so I added the dark hair with the the waves you know the nice mm -hmm. wave to it so that's what I was considering as well and then I fixed the, the area between their chest and made it look more like a heart so it's, it's 
my attention is intended to be right there. Yep. And then I play with the dress to stay with not so much of a curve, but still kept it on that diagonal and just brought it up just a little bit so it's still moving. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much didn't change too much. Just cleaned it up a lot. Can I show you guys something real quick? And then I want you guys to stand up and do this. Okay. Brian, answer me this one question. Where, when you start reading this painting or reading anything, what, where do you start always? From the top. All right. Top what? Over here? Okay. Bill, when you start reading, which direction do you go in? Well, it I mean, each one is, you know, landscape is different from portrait, but in, in this case, I, I went to the left. I mean, I look at the male first in this case. And then you move across this way? Yeah, I did that in this case, yeah. All right, so when you get here, Martin, where does your mm -hmm. eye go next? Down to her foot. Down to her foot. Brian, next, where, where does your eye move next? Go to the other side. All right, with a swing. Now, I want you guys to get up, move forward, lean back and down, and then swing forward. Do that real quick. <laughs> and feel, feel it, feel it. You want to do what again? Get up, move forward just a little bit, Lean back, follow that design. <laughs> Did you just not dance? Yep. Exactly this usually that. makes you dance. Now, just uh, <laughs> using your using your uh, your eyes, go back and, and just look at that design. How your eye moves forward, down the angle, and then sweeping back up. I mean, that's a boom, boom shh, like. <laughs> <laughs> and then to keep repeating that, they're dancing across a floor, man. That that's. It does also make their legs animate and move, uh, just with those lines. And it, it, it literally looks like their legs are, you know, you know, you know, mm -hmm. moving like that. So that's really cool. Well, what, one reason is because you have a triangular shape. Right. You know, it starts in the middle of the square and goes down to where their feet are. So. Yeah. That's that's how that's that's how that's working out. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But um, I, I was just curious. I mean, like when I first saw this image, the the man's shoulder was uh, his elbow was truncated, and the woman's uh, elbow was round. And see, that's been changed to both two, to like you know, um, triangular type elbows. Actually, his was truncated, Bill. Yes, that's right. And, and hers was triangular. And you were suggesting that maybe Martin curve hers and to, so that right. he's because made of all the angles and she's made of the curves. Yeah, or, you know, either switch or do that because because now when I first looked at it, that's like a, that's like a, a line. It's like a line that, that breaks right across there for me. Yep. Like this here is like... It's bam, you know, I'm okay. It sort of like freezes the, uh, unless that's intentional. It freezes my eye, yeah. you know, so. Um. That's a good observation. I, I actually agree with Bill. It did uh, have that effect on my eye in the sense that it, it captured my eye. And for me to kind of keep going, kind of like you had to kind of <clears throat> pull away from that strong attention on it, so. Very uh, Martin, what about if, what do you think if we uh, got rid of this hand back here? Because probably her hand would be not on his back, but on, up on his shoulder. So if we got rid of this all together. Oops. Like that, and then maybe taking this angle here and coming down and cutting his butt. Uh, probably even bring uh, his back up just a little bit there. <laughs> just, a, just a thought. I like it the well, way it is, but it's just a thought. I, 
I agree. Yeah, because I was looking at him like, there's something that's still bugging me about that spot. It looks good, but I can change it. You know what I'm yeah. Saying? Like, yeah. I like and that. Uh, that that could be a good idea with the hips too, because I I will admit the man's hips almost remind me fit of a feminine hip, just because it's. Mm-hmm. It's like a big hip, you know what I'm saying? I mean, um, I mean, if that's what you like, that's that's cool. But uh, <laughs> don't uh, <laughs> just no, no, that's exactly when I when I actually like looked at it. I'm like, okay, there's something I know that I can change right there because it just it's it, it's like standing out. You know what I mean? Her butt sticking out, but his is just like bam. Yeah. It's, it's, Oh, it's, it's, it's too much like too much like a, like a triangle, you know. Mm-hmm. What happened is he's so excited to be with her, and he's trying to hold it in that it popped out the back. <laughs> <laughs> he got a he grew a tail. Yeah. yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. This is good, man. And Very- maybe Bill, uh, Bill, uh, Martin. Maybe uh, I'm just noticing this. Why not take his arm and just extend it up on this line here? You know, it's such a dominant thing that it's like, bam. Which, which, um, like using, using this angle in, in, in here. I don't even see you drawing on there. Oh. Do you see the image? I just blew it up. Do you see your image? Okay, now I see it. Okay. So if you you have the arm coming down on this angle and oh. her chest, what if you brought the chest out here and his arm there? <laughs> that way they're on a... a they're on a, they're on that major broken, that major sinister. Oh, okay, okay. With inside of I this see. roof five. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was playing that with a little bit because I'm like, generally, what do I want? Like a heart shape. But now that you said that, that's yeah, bring it on those major diagonals. And it's still mean. It still has that heart type shape in there, so. Yeah, I think, you know, maybe you're thinking you don't want to sacrifice your, your creative work on the heart. Mm-hmm. However, this way, it just, it's more, um, you know, it lays to the grid better. And it's, it's not a cute thing. It's, it's more, you know, compositional. Yeah. You got to lock it in. <laughs> lock it in, Jack. <laughs> That's right. It is, it's. Dude, I'll tell you what, man, those grids will force your lines, dude. Let me tell you, there was a lot of points where I was just sitting there like, no, nah, I don't want to put it on that line, but I just said, you know what? Yeah, yeah, yeah right. 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 Really you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, Mar- Martin, uh, last comment from me on this is this here. Mm-hmm. You got a green check mark. Because it's small, right? Well, it's small. It's not leaning up on a line. I mean, look at this one. It's like touching that line. It's violating. Yeah. It's like raping it, right? Yeah. It, this has a nice space around it. It, it, it. It's also, I would erase this little piece here so that it just lands on that line. You got it locked on that line. That line is coming in and locking it. It's part of the design. Yeah. It's small. It's not overwhelming. But bottom line is it's part of the design. And it's helping the eye move across here, it's then locking it into here. And honestly, I didn't even see it until the end, and that's a great thing because my eye was constantly doing what it was supposed to be doing. And the signature helped support that. Mm -hmm. It it didn't violate it, it it was in support of it. Can I say one more thing, one more critique? Uh it kind of bothers me and maybe it's not a big deal, but the dress where it, it almost uh, like a dagger. On the front of her leg? On the front of, on the front of her leg. Uh, 
it uh I don't know I don't know um it's almost like that the her dress is almost uh use your big words Brian <laughs> thank you <laughs> I don't know. It's, 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 it's almost like the dagger takes control of my mind versus it being a dress. And it's like I just see that sharp knife, you know, and that uh, kind of takes precedence over it being just a, a dress on her leg, you know. Um, or what if the line, see where it comes at a little horizontal right at the top, if that just went straight across, maybe just curved down just right where his leg is at that point. That could work. That could work. Um... I like what you're saying. It's almost like it's kind of taking a lot of the leg and giving it this sharp. You know, this is where I was having a lot of challenge right here, just getting it lined up with this this grid this leg right here like mm. i had to do this a couple times just to get that to look correct you know right on the grid yeah and then the dress had to come in there as well mm. but the dress you know last time we were really focusing on the on the back mm -hmm. yeah, it, i see what you're saying i was almost thinking just going straight across you know and just maybe give her just a little just like it's kind of wrapping a little bit over her leg but not as much yeah but like this hold on like in the front in the front of the dress just coming straight across here are you yeah. talking about down here brian or up here right there right there well, that, that at the yeah. top or at the bottom of the dress well i, I think marty was talking about on the top right marty yeah. what were you what were you talking about Oh, I was talking about where the where the dress comes down to the bottom of at the her, bottom. Of her angle. I think we're I we're all fine with this, Martin. Uh, at the top here, you could curve that. You can make that go straight across if you want. But here, um, in this image, you have it so that it it's almost like it's almost like the, the dress is wet and, and and kind of stuck to her leg, right? Mm -hmm. But what you could do is just simply um, use that 45 degree angle that's there, right here, okay. add that little extra space in there. So now her dress comes right down in here and clings there. It gives it a little bit of a volume and it kind of helps move that eye on that. that. But in all honesty, I, I didn't mind mind the, the the dress coming into that that sharp point, but yeah. it does it does yeah, feel I, like it's I, not the same. What are you gonna say, Bill? Well, but you know the the sharpness of it seems to me seems to fit the Art Deco style. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, so I you know you're you're right, Brian. I see that, but my mind somewhat somehow overruled that as a as an objection. I took, it as, I took it as the overall style. Right, right, right. But because I also understand where Brian's coming from because um, we're not seeing anywhere else in the image where you have that t type of tangent going on. Hmm. Everything has its own identity. The, true, the shoes, the people, all their features, everything has an identity. This is where, this is really the only place where the leg and the dress or two different elements merge into one 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 element. Right, and what that does is it gives you that sense of, of momentum. That's what I think too, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I agree with you, Bill. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So again, Martin, brilliant strategy. Yeah, very good, man. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, for you guys that are, are going into the grid, like, I'll tell you what, it, to me, taking the sketch right in and then just laying out your biggest lines, like the biggest event helps me out a lot. Mm -hmm. yep. and then being to, you know, usually I keep seeing a lot of people like they, they, they don't want to go in because it's so controlling like that. Those grids are going to lock it in whether you like it or not. And then Victor's going to call you out. But in the end, <laughs> when you look at 
a lot of it starts making sense and you just basically adjust. Yeah. So, so, so let me ask you this. What, what, what was your dominant line, your first line you put in? Oh, the first one was definitely the back leg, his back leg, his dominant oh, really? diagonal. Okay. Yeah. I would have thought it would have been the, the dominant vertical with his chest. That changed at first. When my first sketch first came through, none of that was – I mean, he had his back coming through here. He was twisting like we were showing last time. And then it finally came to – because that space right there between inside the box, I realized, okay, that's where I want him to be in her. Because it, it moved a lot. I mean, it changed a lot. Okay. I mean, it's, like I said, it's just going to change a lot. Here, Martin. <coughs> wow. I was playing around with last night. Yeah. This is a, what I'm doing when I'm putting my book together is I'm working inside of a square. And so I'm doing a root four and a square, right? So if I have a, a long image, it's a root four, small one is a square. But with inside the square, I ultimately have root fives, root threes, different rectangles. But just for right now, um, let me get one other image here real quick. So you can see what I'm working on. You can see this little piece of paper. Yeah. That's just a grid, right? And so like you're saying, when I'm sketching these things out, I'm just sketching, I put a little piece of tracing paper over one of them, if it's one of these, if it's both of them, I use both of them, and I'm just kind of blocking in these major elements to go from this sketch, for example, like this one here with the black tower and the sun behind it, right here, up here is where, where that one is, right? So um, I don't know if you can see that. Um, so this sketch here is here now, right? Mm -hmm. So now I, I go from this idea, I just lay it out, the big areas, okay? I put the tower here, the people here, you know, just laying out those big areas. Then what I'll do is I'll go back with whatever grid that I'm using. If it's a root five, root three or whatever, just to kind of make sure that all the lines mimic that, that, that grid, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But so here, you know, this was my first one of her. This was some girl who walked into the cafe and caught my attention. Sorry. Um, so this was the one I did the other day, which I was kind of happy with part of it, but not all of it here. And then I decided to get rid of the big old crotch area, but I'm very happy with this one. I, I made a few little modifications, but for the most part, you can see how she's just locked into those major elements. Not all the little details, but I know that when I take this line here, that I'm mimicking this one, which comes from this line here, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm just thinking through those, those mimics. Then I'll fine tune it with, with the grids later. Okay. But right now, I'm just going from my sketch to getting a a, 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 a solid draw, you know, clearer, clearer sketch with everything blocked in into the major elements. And then I'll do all the sketches again, uh, basically to kind of like where you have them right now, Martin, like a solid line drawing at yeah. that point. And then from there, I'll take those and worry about the values and and figure out what style I'm going to do it. I'm tempted yeah. to actually take all 20 of these and find artists and say, here, will you paint it out in your style? I'll figure out that theory. Yeah. <laughs> mm. You made a good point. Because doing it this way, what you're really realizing is that there is a job as a composer. Mm -hmm. but, uh, Bill and I have been talking a lot about this. Most artists are singer-songwriters. They write their songs and they sing them. They perform them. So we're kind of like in a different part of the music industry where we're composing music that potentially other people could perform. Mm -hmm. that, I mean, that's a whole new approach to art making, right? Yeah. <laughs> and like Bill was saying, you know, you, you're kind of being the, the producer of work, right? Yeah. 
Yeah. So, um, so the question I think that we're facing now is like, okay, we have this great song, but do I perform it as an, you know, as a solo artist on an acoustic guitar, or do I go find a band that that you know has really perfected a certain sound that now they can take my song and 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 put their sound to it, you know? They take my message and put their voice to it. Uh, and I think that's a really neat question that we're all at, you know? Yeah. yeah. Mm. Uh, well, I think what is, it's like, to, it's like, you know, you could take a piece of music and when, when the guy arranges it, an arranger can take, Mary had a little lamb and arrange it in such a way that it makes you feel wonderful. Because he's taken the basic fabric of that, of those notes, and he's worked them in a way that he knows how that gives a certain result. And that's similar to what a composer does. You can take a basic image, but how you orchestrate the image in terms of your knowledge, what, what the manipulation of space can give you is what makes the difference. So therefore, the, the painter comes in and can paint, but he's painting over what you've already drawn out in terms of intended outcome. Yep. All right, B, you want to close this out, man? Oh, wait. Our heads in prayer? No, it's sure. <laughs> No, be, be, before we go, I have a request. I need... I need some help uh, working in uh, Illustrator to get my grids into the Illustrator. Mm. Hmm. Um. I will see if I have them built in Vector. I think they were all in Vector on the computer that was stolen. Oh, okay. And then I had to basically use my my uh my photoshop um ps uh, uh my photoshop pdfs which are rasterized so at some point i'm gonna have to go back and re do all the grids but if you had the grid you could just copy and paint uh, open it in, in illustrator select it you would hit um can command five and it would take it and actually create it as a background grid layer on okay. it. Okay. That's that's what I need. Yeah, so you can just like turn it on and off as you need it. It's command five. Yeah, so if you draw like a, a path or anything in Illustrator and you select it and you do command five, it'll turn it into a blue grid line. And oh. so to show it you would hit command uh, colon, and to then the hide it, you would hit command colon, so you can turn it on and off. Okay. So it's it's really simple and really useful, but I need to get you a vector version of a, of of these grids to do that, which will probably not be this week since I am going to be doing the three uh, web uh, workshops this week. You have three. You have three workshops. Yeah. That's not enough, Victor. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, man. You're right. <laughs> I told uh, uh, Bill and Brian Martin, I did something crazy this week. What did you do? I talked to Hulk Hogan's people. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, he's like a painter. Like, like I remember years ago seeing like some of his paintings. He was like on a beach painting. Oh. I think they even did a TV commercial with it. Um, and it just kind of got me thinking, like, why not? You know, like, why can't uh, Victor be a consultant and a coach to the stars? You know, because I was thinking, like, what we're doing here is so important, and it has such a dramatic, uh, such a um, uh, um, a resounding effect in the art world and we're just in the beginning of it but it will it will change the way art is done and thought about for generations 
And yeah. if if that's what we're trying to do here, then we need some heavy influential players to be on our on our team. And celebrities, if they're painters like like George Bush, you know, he, he's like he like painting cats and stuff now, right? <laughs> but in retirement, these people don't need to sell paintings to make a living. They don't need to sell paintings to make a name for themselves. So they're the perfect candidates to really learn how to compose art for art's sake and do it at a master pro high level because they got, you know, they would have the time and the resources. And they also have a higher sense of consciousness. You know, when you start playing at that level of the game, you become much more cosmopolitan than, than tribal. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you're laughing at my uh, use of those words, Bill, or 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 you're in disagreement with me on that. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, my God, he went from cosmopolitan to tribal. I said, no, my look, look what this guy did, boy. <laughs> That's cool, man. I've been hanging around Bill too much. <laughs> He, he went from cosmopolitan to tribal on me. I said, oh, when you said cosmopolitan, I said, yeah, okay. When you said tribal, I said, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. I'm learning. <laughs> Got it, man. But yeah. yeah, man, like, you know, why not get, you know, if you're going to set sail and you want to move quick, you don't do it when there's a br gentle breeze. You know, you get out in a hurricane, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Without fear. <laughs> so, yeah, we're going to start um, purposing that, being intentional about that. And uh, we might have to make a trip out to Cali. <laughs> so, so, oh, yeah, so, so what's, your, what's your plan for, for broadcasting from the, from the high museum there in Atlanta? Uh, I don't know yet. Uh, I just know the technology is there now. Um, years ago, I used to go to museums with my foot cam and uh, basically analyze the art. So my thought was, I always said, if I could take people to a museum and, and walk through uh, an exhibition with them, when I do it, we spend 20 minutes on one image and you got 15 groups that have already seen the entire show before we get to the second one. And right. it's like, what the? You know, it's mind boggling. So when I take people to a museum and I start showing them the stuff and we start having those conversations, they leave and art's never the same again to them. So now that we can do live broadcasts on Facebook, right? this ain't something I got to do and then be like, oh, crap, let me run home and edit it up. And Yeah, right, right, right. right. Uh, we're doing this live, live from New York City. We're at the Met. <laughs> well, that's, that's I'm from Philadelphia. <laughs> hey, now, now, excuse me, man. Hey, look, you better, you better watch out. Grant Cardone is in the building now. I know. I'm feeling the energy, man. <laughs> so, so, so I'm happy that you, 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 you're going to do that because the High Museum supposedly has a wonderful art, African art exhibit there. Um, oh, I'll, I'll, I, I, let me see. My primary focus right now is these workshops and um and i'll be back in Atlanta at some point so i i'm not going to commit at this point that i'm going to do that although i might just for the challenge of it and the expansion of it brian um fuck it we're gonna do it before i leave i'm gonna go to the high museum I mean, that's, that's what i'm saying you have to you have to make a whole day visit you go in there check it out see how it plays out make an announcement on your facebook you're gonna take you're gonna take your guys to the to the high museum, and uh, you're gonna analyze whatever they got going on up in there. And and what I would do, Grant Cardone, Don Don Victor, I would make an appointment with the one of the curators. That'd be kind of cool. You go talk to them. Yeah, you know, like hey, I'm Don Victor, man. Who we? I'm Don. I'm the HUS. I'm Don Victor. I'm, I'm, the, I'm the king of composition. The <laughs> king of composition. We spell composition with a K. That's right. <laughs> so chemistry spelled with a K, too. That's awesome. 
All right, guys. Brian, you want to close us out? That's it for this meetup, guys. But, but you know you know why they spell it with the C? Because it's cute. No, because because it's uh, Kabbalistic. The Kabbal the Kabbalists are the ones who use the C. The uh, <laughs> Gnostics are the ones who use the K. Yeah. So who 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 are they? The Gnostics. Oh, the Gnostics. Yeah. The Kabbalists Kabbalists took the K and made it C. Mm. And the Kabbalists are the ones who've been, you know. Um, oh, you said the Kabbalists. Yes. Oh, the Kabbalah guys. Yeah. I thought you said the capitalist. I'm like what? The capitalist. No, I, I got you. I got you now. I got you now. But at first, I thought you said capitalist, and I was like, I don't get that. So, um, okay, that makes total sense. Okay, that's kind of that's neat, huh? Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't know that. That's neat. Speak, speaking of uh, Bill, that image that you sent me with the two lizards. Yeah. Is that that chemistry? Oh, um, yeah, they, what do you mean with the chemistry? I don't understand what you oh, mean. Oh, was that a, was that a Kabbalistic image or was that like a... Oh, you know, I, I think it's, uh, I think it's Kabbalistic, I think. It's out of the, I think it's out of the Kabbalistic tradition, but I think, I don't remember for sure. It may go back even to comedic days. I'm not sure. It, it's really spoke to me, man. I appreciate you sending that to me. Right, right. Yeah. It's awesome. On, the, on that note, B. All right, guys. That's it for the meetup this time. See you guys next time. I don't know who will be facilitating next time, so we'll find out, I guess. Yeah, we will. I think from this point on, I, I, I'd like to, in preparation for our expansion, I really want the meetups to really be facilitated by you guys rather than it turning into a teaching session by me. This is really, the meetups are really just to have community conversation around composition, the three C's, but we will never say the three K's. Um, <laughs> the K, 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 baby. <laughs> the K, 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 baby. But I think you and Brian are the only two who are allowed to say that. I can't say, well, I can say it. Yeah, yeah. I'm a little brown. <laughs> KKK. Mark, right? your tongue closed. <laughs> 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 you, got a, you got a funny angle in that, that back of the house. You might want to move your head. <laughs> <laughs> no triangles, man. No triangles. No. Right, right, right. <laughs> but, yeah, we want community, composition, and what was the other third? Communication. <laughs> Communication, yeah, man. We want to communicate about this stuff, and that's what this meetup is about. It's not a teaching session per se. I think we did do that in the beginning, and that was fine. Um, from this point on, you know, we got to uh, delegate teaching to certain things. I have that the course now on teachable.com. So I'll send you guys all the links. Go sign up for the free course, the free little video that you already saw, Brian. And then when you when you do that you'll be in the system and then what I can do is apply the video course to you guys. And I, and I basically laid out the video course with the new process, which is design, construction, finish. And so the design will be thrust maps, the, uh, this stuff, you know, like a, a storytelling, that kind of stuff, design strategies. Phase two is construction. That's the grid layer. So right now I'm in the design sec uh, stage with these with this image here. Next, grid layer. That's construction. Construction, right. And then after that, when you get into the values and the temperatures, you're going into the finish. Okay. And then you can hand it off to a performer to sing your song, or you can be the singer. You can be the the singer yourself, you know, and, and execute it in your style. Right. I, I think that analogy might be useful in terms of like really, you know, focus on what we do. Tell yeah. them, telling our story. Yep. And so the meetups are just going to be a place to help, you know, facilitate relationship and, and, and the composer's mindset. But um, it's not a place where we're going to be overly teaching any longer. Cool? Cool. Sounds good, man. Awesome. All right, guys. All right, guys. Lovely, guys. 
Later. Peace out. And meeting for every.